My name is Dr. Levy, and I'm going to talk to you about the neuroscience of the placebo effect. Now, there's no more confusing term in medicine than the placebo effect. It refers to a variety of pharmacologically inert therapies that are effective for a variety of reasons. Examples of pharmacologically inert therapies include um, sugar pills, petroleum jelly, fake creams, innocuous inhalants, saline injections, um, fake medical devices, sham surgeries, acupuncture with or without retractable needles, um, intracranial electrodes that are in the off position, just to name a few. Reasons why these inert treatments may be effective include, one, the natural course of most illnesses is to improve, two, patients often have a desire to please an authority figure so they report exaggerated improvement when asked, three, expectation of an improvement can cause a patient to think an improvement happened when none did. Four, unseen and unknown events can cause a patient to misperceive that something therapeutic has occurred. Number five, unseen or unknown agents that are not under study could be responsible for the patient's improvement. And number six, the power of suggestion can actually cause real changes in your brain that actually affect physiology. Now the placebo effect refers to all of these events. The problem is that these events are difficult to disentangle. Reasons one through five involve misperception. Misperception is easy to understand and is not terribly exciting. Number six is more interesting. It involves a genuine change in brain function that produces real physiologic effects. Wow, now that is exciting. However, you must understand one caveat. I am not saying that any placebo effect can treat any illness. It can only trigger a compensatory brain mechanism. For example, endogenous opioids for pain, adrenaline for fear, substance P to facilitate pain perception, oxytocin to deal with the arrival of an infant, dopamine to learn which environmental stimuli produce reward, histamine to trigger the inflammatory response, and so on throughout all of the regulatory neurotransmitters and hormones. These compensatory mechanisms are physiologic responses, but they don't treat disease. Therefore, what I am saying is that you can initiate a physiologic response through non-pharmacologic means. A good example of this is, let's say if I was to tell you that you are wrong and you feel bad in your stomach, or I could tell you, way to go, and you feel really good inside. These are non-pharmacological ways to change brain function and cause physiologic effects. Now, let's reconsider some of the myths and the biases in regards to the placebo effect. First of all, is deception absolutely necessary? I think it is not. No study has ever demonstrated that it is, and numerous studies conclude that it is not. For example, a physician can tell a patient that they are getting an inert treatment. He can say, if you believe it will work, then your brain will produce endorphins endogenously that will actually reduce your pain. The amazing thing is that a percentage of patients will still experience analgesia. The physician can increase this percentage by patient selection and by the manner in which he presents it to the patient. The patient could even improve this effect through practice. Now, number two is this. Must a patient be stupid in order to respond? Actually, intelligent and educated patients respond the best. They are better able to follow directions. This may explain why higher socioeconomic individuals make more use of complementary and alternative medicines. Response has to do with attention, focus, and ability to follow suggestion. It is not related to IQ. Third, must a patient be naive in order to respond? Well, a patient must be able to follow suggestion. Naive or not just doesn't matter. Furthermore, following suggestions is a skill that can be learned by a fully informed and intelligent individual. 
an individual who wants to do it. Finally, is paternalism necessary or could collaboration between doctor and patient work? I would suggest that either would work equally well. What is more crucial is the manner in which the physician communicates to the patient. In other words, the doctor should behave in such a way that he gets respect, seems to care, and imparts confidence in his treatment. So, what kind of non-pharmacologic interventions work by causing the brain to produce neurotransmitters that initiate compensatory mechanisms? Well, psychotherapy, hypnosis, placebos, and almost every alternative medicine that there is. Of course, all of these also work through misdirection. Perhaps we need to revise the nomenclature. One through five could be called misdirection placebos, and number six could be called non-pharmacologic interventions, or NPIs, which would include psychotherapy, hypno hypnosis, placebos, and almost every alternative medicine. Now, you might think at first glance that these NPI therapies are too different to be all be lumped into the same category. However, what do you think are the essential therapeutic elements common to all of these treatment modalities? How about the ability to follow suggestion, a patient's expectation, and all of the factors involved in a doctor-patient relationship? Do you remember Dr. Freud? He started out with a thing called mesmerism, hypnosis, that he got from a French guy named Mesmer, right? Then he morphed it into his famous talking therapy, psychotherapy. Now, Dr. Mesmer, when he, got the, when he did it, he, his original idea was he just wanted to see if he could just tell people to get better, and then they would get better. It, does that sound kind of familiar? In any case, um, it's sort of like the placebo effect, don't you think? Is it really so hard to conceptualize that hypnosis and psychotherapy are just elaborate ways to achieve the placebo effect? Therefore, and in summary, the placebo effect can occur secondary to numerous types of misperception, but it can also occur due to actual brain mechanisms that initiate compensatory responses to disease and injury. However, no NPI can actually cure any underlying medical disease or illness. Actually, there is one category of medical illness that is 100% curable through non-pharmacologic intervention. It happens to be the number one most common reason people seek help from a family physician. Family physicians, you know the answer. It is called psychosomatic illness, <laughs> which gets treated extremely well with placebo.